one way to start the day is uh, because we're going to be talking a little bit about science is to figure out what science is about and uh, for that you need to get to two words very important words and one is the how and the other one is the why you know we, we usually use these uh, words we ask how what are we asking we ask why what are we asking does the other person understand exactly what you're asking when you use how or when you use why so let's look at this uh, you have um, someone asks uh, how did the ball fall okay well, there's a couple answers that you can give. You can say, well, it fell at 9.8 meters per second square, or it fell fast. How's that for, uh, for an answer? Is that what he was asking? Well, maybe he was asking something else. Maybe he was asking, you know, whether it was pushed or pulled. Maybe he's asking for a mechanism, okay? And so uh, you have to watch out for these words because they have two senses, two meanings, two types of understanding, okay? They, they don't, uh, you, you have to specify to the person exactly what you want him to answer, okay? And uh, so uh, the first one is math. It's just a description, 9.8 meters per second squared, fast. Uh, the fast part, maybe not. That's, uh, it, it's not math, but it is a description, right? And the second one, you know, this one here is uh, physics. We're looking for an explanation. So a description is not the same thing as an explanation, okay? The first one deals with what happened, and the second one deals with how it happened. So these are different uh, types of replies that you give to the same word how, in which, which is how we start you know, a sentence maybe, a question, okay? Then there's the why, and you know, you probably ask, you know, why did he fall? And we end up with the same type of problem. You know, uh, maybe, I don't know, we're talking about a clown, and uh, so you're asking either how it happened or what led to him doing something. You know, how did he fall? Well, you might say he tripped. Well, that's the mechanism. But at the same time, you can say, why did he fall? Well, because he's a clown and he was supposed to do it to make people laugh or for, for the show or for whatever. So in one case, you're talking about, you know, mechanisms and causes, right? And in the other one, you're talking about what? You're talking about reasons and purpose, okay? And it's these two on the right-hand side, not the one with math, not the how, how did he fall, you know, uh, how fast or whatever. It's these two on the side here, those are what form what we call science. That's what people want to know. That's uh, in science, you know, that's what people investigate. How is it that gravity works? That's what people want. That's what people ask. Why do we ask these questions? We ask these questions because we can't see the mediator. See, if you if you have a pulley, uh, you know, and you pull on a box uh, with a rope through the pulley, well, people look and they say, okay, yeah, I understand how, how that happened, how the box pulled was pulled up. But when you say, you know, uh, the pen fell on the floor, well, now you don't see... You know what caused it and that's why people ask those questions and want to know especially for from the physicists but we what we have is that the mathematical physicists so-called physicists came into existence and they are the ones who usually answer these questions and they usually answer or always answer them with irrational explanations that's where the problem is we don't have rational explanations for gravity, for magnetism, for how the atom works. There's no rational explanations. And why? Because <clears throat> uh, math can only describe. Physics is about explaining the mechanisms, and that's what we don't have today. Okay? Okay. Let's get back into the show here. Here's a uh, summary, maybe, of the hows and whys. Okay? Here you can see it. Uh, math, you know, math just uh, is a description. Maybe talks about rates, ratios, measurement. Religion, on the other hand, they do hows and whys as well. 
but what do they talk about? Well, they talk about how you should behave. They talk about opinions and recommendations. Okay, and that's where the problem is. That's what religion is. Religion is not really about God. It's about, you know, uh, opinions and recommendations. And, um, and what's the purpose of religion? Well, religion, what religion wants to do is persuade. Okay, it wants to be able to convince, convert, and recruit you. It deals with maybe morality, politics, you know, ethics, those kinds of things. And those are all opinions, you know, and uh, science is objective, yeah, whereas religion is subjective. So that's essentially, you know, the, uh, the chart that gives you, that puts how and why in the proper context, okay? So that's where we start. And, um, well, why is this important? Well, let me put this chart back up there. Uh, because Al-Khalidi, as you've seen these uh, last couple weeks, or he, <laughs> more weeks, uh, he's on that mathematics side or he's on the religion side. He's never, never at all in the science realm. He's never in there, yeah, especially in physics where he's supposed to be. That's his, essentially what he says that he studied. That's what he tries to spread out there. He never does physics. What he does is either mathematical descriptions with irrational physical interpretations or he does religion. He just gives his uh, opinion about something, a recommendation or whatever, uh, primarily opinions. And, um, and this new fellow, Richard Dawkins, uh, appears to be in the same boat. So who is Richard Dawkins? Well, let's give a quick uh, synthesis of who he is. He's a biologist, ecologist. Uh, studied at Oxford University. He, has, he says he became an atheist after reading uh, Burton Russell's Why I Am Not a Christian. Burton Russell said he was an atheist. Maybe I should write a book saying why I stopped being an atheist. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to be an atheist also and I got out of it. Did I become a Christian, a Muslim, a uh, Buddhist? <laughs> No, no, I became a scientist, and scientists, science is at odds with, uh, with atheism. Atheism is unscientific, okay? And I'll probably be dealing with that next week, next time around, okay? By the way, on uh, Friday, I'm going to be interviewed, and I'm going to post that later on. I'm going to see how it works. Um, interviewed on... Uh, uh, my past, <laughs> my past experience with spying, okay, uh, Marxism and that kind of thing. Okay, so yeah, he wrote uh, The Selfish Gene, 1976, became uh, kind of famous for that. And he's uh, won all these beauty, beauty uh, contests, uh, all these prizes, medals, uh, Olympic medals that they give out there, and became a uh, fellow of the Royal Society in 2001. Um, you know, that that's uh, like giving you prizes for intelligence. You know, for beauty, we give prizes to the girl who's the most beautiful. To the fastest runner, we give them a little medal also for being the fastest runner at the Olympics. And uh, mathematical physics has done the same thing. They give prizes for intelligence or for knowledge or for whatever, <laughs> for discovering something in many cases accidentally like Penzias and Wilson did uh, in 1963 with the background radiation. Okay, um, uh, yeah, so uh, this, is, this is good old uh, Dawkins today, but I, I look at him more like this, you know, I think he's more like a caricature of science. I don't have much respect for him at all uh, from a scientific perspective. And why is that? Well, let's find out. He wrote a book, and that's what Al-Khalidi Al -Khalidi did not interview him, but they had a little chat on science, and uh, it came out of that book that uh, Dawkins wrote. And this is the book, okay? It says, uh, Science in the Soul. And I started suspecting that book because it had the approval of two people <laughs> who certainly are not scientists by any means a stretch of the imagination. One is Michael Shermer, who is a uh, uh, editor uh, of uh, Skeptic Magazine. Another one is this James Randi, magician. Um, I had a little bout with Randi 
couple years ago and uh, and he supposedly tries to debunk all non-scientific proposals and so I questioned him about energy <laughs> and so uh, we went back and forth on the issue of energy he couldn't believe that I was saying that there is no such thing as energy and I said energy is a concept and he couldn't accept that and he cut me off he blocked me <laughs> Okay, and so these two guys vouch for Richard, Richard uh, Dawkins' book. And as you can see, uh, you know, uh, Shermer says, no living scientist is more deserving of such recognition than Richard Dawkins. You're not a highly, uh, not a high recommendation coming from Shermer, okay, uh, at least in my opinion, whose every book reflects his literary, literary genius and scientific substance. Science in the soul is the perfect embodiment of noble quality literature. Uh, yeah, they talk about prizes and they talk about science. Let's find out if, if these people have any idea what science is and what the purpose of science is, okay? And Randy says, science is in the soul is packed with Dr. Dawkins' philosophy, humor, anger, and quiet wisdom, leading the reader gently but firmly to inevitable conclusions that edify and educate, while dropping uh, in periodic uh, bonds, mods that seize attention rather firmly. Okay, and again, these, these people are are um, giving kudos to uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Dawkins and the question is whether any of them are doing science okay so let's get to that let's see if we can find out if these people are doing science what does uh, Al um, what does uh, Dawkins say in his book well essentially this is what um, what he, he summarizes it, it in a sense as okay and he says uh, it's a battle cry against irrationality that's what the book is about okay that's what he tells Al Khalili and he mentions a couple examples he says homeopathy uh, telepathy and water divining uh, and all the things that have no scientific justification but which have a kind of appeal almost like the appeal of science fiction Oh, I thought uh, it was uh, the mathematical physicists who do science fiction. Uh, so this is news. Uh, he, he, these guys think that these other folks are alchemists or, or astrologers. They dismiss them as such, cranks and crackpots, because they uh, deal with such issues as telepathy and water divining. And uh, the question is, what do they do in exchange? I mean, is there is any better? Like, um, here's a, a list of irrationalities of math. Okay, black hole, zero dimensional nothingness, dark matter, ultra heavy invisible stuff that they put in the equations to make them come out right to mimic what they see out there. Particle at two places at once. What sense does that make? What proof do they have? What evidence do they have for that? Wave particle duality. Can you draw it? Can you make a picture of it so I can see what you're talking about? Entanglement, tunneling, decoherence, superposition. What are those nonsenses that they had to invent, you know, uh, to be consistent with the uncertainty principle, which means that they don't know nothing. <laughs> That's essentially what uncertainty means. Uh, multiverse, uh, you branch off every step you take, you branch off in a different universe. Big Bang creationism. How is that uh, any different than telepathy, water divining, and homeopathy? Okay. So, yeah, uh, so I think what these people, they, they, he says, he adds there, the appeal of a kind of romance of science without the rigor of science. Are any of those on the right-hand side rigorous? I mean, as far as uh, the physical interpretation, okay, the explanation. And my answer is absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> I want a rational explanation. And um, just in case you might say, well, Bill, that's because you don't understand. No, no. These people are telling you in your face that they don't understand their own theories. So you get these uh, mathematicians, they go in there and they say, uh, you ask them whatever, you know, gravity, how does it work? And the guy says, well, you know, it's the bending of time. And you say, well, uh, that sounds kind of odd because time, I thought, was a concept. How do you bend time? Well, yeah, we don't understand it either, but it's been proven. And so you end up <laughs> like saying, and if you really want to understand, you got to take a course, math course at the university level. Then you'll understand. 
And that's it. That's the end of the conversation. You leave saying, well, what did I learn today? <laughs> I learned that I got to go to college and be brainwashed like they were. That's what I, brain <laughs> I learned. So, so yeah, we got a problem because we don't have answers. And uh, like, you know, you get in the uh, Quora where I write articles every now and then. And, uh, you know, people ask qualitative type questions. They don't want you giving them a bunch of equations. They, they want to know how gravity works, how a magnet attracts another, how electricity works, uh, you know, uh, what the ionization is and so on. And uh, these people give them nonsense. They give them nonsense. They give them equations. They give them opinions. And they claim it's been proven, and then immediately they say, oh, but we don't understand it. And if you really want to understand, you got to go to college. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, people come out as dumb as they came in, or even dumber. They say, oh, thank God there's someone out there who knows all this stuff and does all that math, and that we have all this technology thanks to them. Because otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have my smartphone, and uh, I wouldn't have, you know, uh, GPS and uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, Al Khalidi says uh, to um, to Dawkins, he said, "We used to live in a village where everybody knew each." No, Dawkins says this. Sorry, uh, where everybody knew each other. You know, you have a small village; everybody knows each other. And today, we are in a global village connected through the internet. They're saying that's uh, somewhat positive uh, to to a degree. It is, you know, here. You know, you have a chance, like through YouTube or whatever, to communicate the potential, right? To communicate with the entire world. But what is the problem? There are some problems with that as well because, you know, you, you also have this situation where, um, you know, today we have more censorship because we found more efficient ways to discover dissidents and more ways to silence those who oppose Big Brother theories. Uh, the internet also is uh, way overcrowded, and it's almost impossible to get a new theory out into the world. Not so that people will believe it, but so that people are aware of it, uh, uh, options. This is no longer possible. You got so much overcrowdedness out there that people have trouble finding, you know, needles in the haystack. Uh, and uh, because of that, there's an elite that can voice their opinions. You know, people like these two fellows here, always proposing ridiculous explanations. Uh, for physical phenomena, whereas rational folk who realize that the explanations are bogus are summarily brushed aside and treated as demented cranks and crackpots. So uh, there is a so even though yeah in in the old days uh, you were able to silence the guy in the uh, village whom you didn't want to voice his opinion because you know maybe the priest wanted to give a different message and this guy was somewhat of a troublemaker. So you could identify that guy in the village, right? and uh, isolate him somehow, punish him or whatever. And today, you know, we don't, maybe don't dip people in the water in a cold <laughs> bath uh, as they used to in the old days for violating some, some, something of the church or whatever. Uh, today what they do is they, uh, on the one hand, they have all these el elites and um, what they do is they censor you essentially by not allowing you to publish in their magazines. And their magazines have become uh, the focus, you know, what, what blogs and so on look at and try to translate for the masses. So you got, you got to go to their magazines for that. And you can't publish in their magazines because they're not interested in physical mechanisms. What they're interested in is equations and measurements. That's all they're interested in. That's what their magazines do. So when you go and look at a physics paper, it talks about a bunch of equations and how they uh, settled something in math. And then they give you an irrational physical interpretation or, or that's what the blogs take out of there and that's what they publish. You have these uh, popularization magazines and so on. And that's what they give the public. And you can't penetrate that world because in order to penetrate that world, you got to go into the world of math and publish math when that's not what your intention is. Your intention is to explain a mechanism. And what they do is they say, well, that's philosophy. That's on the other side of campus. Okay, so you go to the other side of campus, say, okay, let me publish here in the uh, philosophy magazines, since apparently this is philosophy, right? And they say, look, uh, we've already got it settled. Uh, see, we receive our cues from the mathematicians, and all we do is analyze quantum mechanics and relativity. Do you have something to offer us within that world? And you say, well, I, I don't agree with relativity or with quantum mechanics or string theory. I've got a different... Um, proposal 
And no, you can't get it in there because they say, well, go through the mathematicians first, see if they approve it. And so you get this runaround and you never get it in there <laughs> because all you want to do is just tell people a different side of the story of how this universe works. And that's over and done with. You know, you can't get it because you have this close uh, loop circle where the mathematicians feed the philosophers, the philosophers philosophize, whatever, they, they come to their own conclusions, they write a lot of stuff about that and whether it's right or wrong and this and that. And they have their world, the mathematicians have their world, and we have a, a crazy world. We only have irrational physical interpretations for everything. And how do you get in there? Well, you can't anymore. And that's why this global village uh, is a blessing. It's also a curse. So I don't know about global villages anymore. And uh, so these two folks continue. It says, Al-Khalili, it's so hard to change someone's view. If they believe in something or won't believe, it doesn't matter what logic, what evidence you present to them, they'll stick to it. And Dawkins answers, you and I are both in the business of trying to convince people of the things. And as you say, it is difficult. I really haven't developed any technique apart from just putting it out there. So these people think, these two uh, individuals believe or were taught or memorized by heart that the uh, purpose of science is to persuade, to convince people, to get them to believe. And they say it's so hard because people have these notions that they got maybe from their parents uh, or from school or from church. And they have these ideas and these people say, we're, we're trying to change all that. We're trying to get you to believe something else. And, uh, and it's so hard to convince you that there is no God, for example. That's not the purpose of science. Science is not there to tell you what the opinions of these guys are. And they claim they've proven it, but then they immediately say they don't understand it. So what is it that they proved? They certainly didn't prove a mechanism of how this universe works. And that's what they're addressing because they're saying, oh, there is no God. God does not run things. The angels don't run things. There are no spirits. And they brush all that aside. But what do they put in instead? They say, well, there's energy and there's mass and there's all these fields out there. Well, it looks like uh, you're talking about spirits as well. I mean, what? And there's bent time. You know, I mean, what is all this? What are we talking about? What do you mean uh, bent time or warp time? What, what do you mean you transferred energy? What do you mean there's a mass, a very heavy mass, invisible, intangible, obviously, that pulls on a star from very far away? Well, what is all this nonsense? You're talking about spirits as well. But they won't allow you to criticize that again, okay? And uh, so these people get a, a free reign and they can go on out there and just say whatever they want. Uh, as far as physical interpretations, because they're not going to be talking to mathematicians. They're going to be talking to the general public, and they can't t put an equation in there, you know, and say, look, this is the equation, you know, especially if it's a sophisticated equation, people will lose interest immediately. No, they have to try to bring it down to the masses and say, well, this is what we mean. Okay, what did you mean? Well, there's warp space and warp time. What do you mean there's warp time? Well, yeah, that's, that's the way we explain. Here's the equation. You would have to take a course in math to understand the equation. And meanwhile, you just have to accept our word. Well, that sounds a lot like that little village there where the priest would tell them, you know, the Bible says so. And you got to believe because uh, it says so in the Bible. And since you guys don't know how to read, and I'm the only guy in the village who knows how to read, uh, I'm passing this information on to you. You got to believe me. Otherwise, you'll be punished. You won't go to heaven. <laughs> and these guys say the same thing. They say, you will be punished. You will not be allowed to publish, in our magazines at least. Okay? And yeah, they dominate that world, and so you can't get your foot in the door. That's, that's what it is. And so a lot of people are looking for real answers, uh, rational answers. And of course, you'll never find them in mathematical physics. All you have is irrational physical interpretations for invisible, intangible phenomena. The visible stuff, tangible stuff, we figured all that out. That's, that's a no-brainer today, essentially, most of them at least. You know, maybe you might have questions about air. Well, is there something called air? You know, uh, I pass my hand or something there, but I don't see it. So you might have a different idea about that. But if it's visible, intangible, we got it figured out. In macro, we got it figured out. It's the invisible micro stuff, the macro 
stuff that we can't see, those are the ones that we're having trouble with. And we have no solution from the mathematical establishment. Okay? Well, they continue, not only are they trying to persuade, but they now they give you an idea of what belief is. They have a different interpretation of what belief is. And this more or less explains their atheism. Okay? And here it is. Um, in science, when we use the word belief, we mean something different from lack of evidence, okay? faith-based belief. So we sometimes use the word belief rather sloppily. I don't know what other word they can use, so I'm not sure how sloppily that is, okay? When we maybe should use a different word. What other word are you going to use? You're talking about belief. But what are they talking about? They, uh, someone asked the question and the audience asked them. Uh, it was a public uh, talk. If science is about looking for truth, how does that differ significantly from religion and God? And uh, one of them, I think it was uh, 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 Richard Dawkins who answered, we look for truth using evidence. So they're, they're seeking truth. And truth, I thought, was an opinion. You know, what is true to you is a lie to your neighbor. And these people are looking for truth. They're looking for truth using evidence. What evidence convinced them does not convince their neighbors, right? That we can actually go out and test experimentally. How can you test experimentally something that is invisible and intangible, such as the mediator of gravity? What kind of test can you run? Just let go of the ball and see how it falls to the floor? Is, is that the test that you're going to run? I mean, you can't, through an experiment, determine what gravity is and how it works. For that, you got to sit back and visualize. That's not what these people do. They're looking for evidence to convince them. And so when the other guy, the religious, uh, the traditional religious, because they're religious too, but the traditional religionist comes in there and says, well, we do it with spirits. We have these angels that pull the ball down. I mean, maybe that's their explanation. Maybe they say it's the uh, angels, God's angels that move the earth around the sun or whatever. And these people say, you're such an ignoramus, you know. Of course not. It's warped space. It's warped time. It's, um, uh, what is it? Uh, negative momentum. You throw the rock and the uh, tree comes towards you. <laughs> So how is one different than the other? How is one more scientific than the other? What experiment are you going to run to test, uh, you know, your, your, this theory that they, these people have? There is no test. There is no experiment you can run on intangible, invisible mediators. And so I don't know what these people are trying to do. If here they are in the 21st century, they haven't realized that you can't figure out uh, the invisible, intangible uh, mechanisms through experiments period we're done <laughs> okay okay so uh here i i put uh plato because uh let's put this guy back up here these people talk about now is how they know or how they believe really and all they're saying is that they're harping on on that justified true belief that plato talked about you know it's um that's what knowledge is and what they're talking about they have knowledge whereas religion has belief but it turns out knowledge is belief according to plato and that's what we're still using today in in uh, all of so-called science philosophy physics and what these people are saying essentially through experimental and you know evidence they're saying it's got to be justified that's the word they're harping out when they say uh, that theirs is different than just ordinary belief it's the justified part and so the question is, you know, again, how justified are they in saying that their stuff is any different than, um, than the person who proposes angels and spirits that we can't see and touch or prove? And they're saying the same thing. They're using mediators that we can't see, touch, or prove. They're using energy. They're using field. They're using, um, you know, time. So, so mass, what are we talking about? We're talking about concepts. You can't, you can't do gravity with mass. That's okay for the equation. You use, uh, whether you use Einstein or Newton, it doesn't matter. You can put mass in there, fine. That's, that's a calculation. I want to know the mechanism. What's the physical mechanism? That's when they bring the mass, the energy, the field back into physics. 
when they're not supposed to, because those words do not belong as objects in physics. And so this is where we have a problem. They're bringing all their math gibberish into physics. Okay, uh, and then they finally tackled a question, uh, these two fellows, and they said, talk about a subject we talked about a, about a week ago, uh, free will versus determinism. And they say, free will is an illusion. Uh, Al-Khalili says this, okay? Everything that I do is determined. And where do you get that from? The block universe. That's Einstein's, uh, you know, equations lead to everybody in relativity today saying the block universe is out there. Everything has already happened. You know, God there, you know, he's already, from his point of view, he can see everything. And he says, you know, it's already happened. I know, God knows, because he knows everything, right? So he knows what happened already in the future. He can see the block universe. He can see the future, the past, everything. We can't. We can't see the future. We can memorize or remember the past through people who, you know, put it out to us, but we can't see the future, okay? And so he says, however, it's such a powerful illusion, you know, free will, uh, that you might as well forget about that. All of us behave as if and believe as it be, uh, believe as if we do have free will. In other words, there's this deterministic universe. It's already done. It's already happened. And this fellow says, but but we act uh, as if we had free will. It's like, yeah, the the block universe exists, but it doesn't matter because we act as if we have free will. That's a contradiction. Either the either the equations show and prove and demonstrate and experimentally provided evidence that the block universe is there and we're just walking on footsteps or we have free will. We can't have it both ways. Either the movie has already happened and Bugs Bunny has to do whatever the artist programmed and prescribed for him or Bugs Bunny can act outside the role uh, that, you know, predestined for him. Or one or the other, you can't have it both ways. And these people keep, you know, debating this here 2,000 years later. They're still debating the same issue. And now they claim they do it from a scientific point of view that they have proof. And the proof is that the future has already happened because otherwise, you know, Einstein's equations are wrong. And so if it's already happened, if, if everything has already been predetermined, then, um, then, you know, there is no free will. But they say we have free will anyways because we don't know what's going to happen. It's irrelevant. Your knowledge is irrelevant if the future has already happened. It's an irrelevant word to introduce into discussion. He says, we live in a deterministic universe. He reinforces this, right? We live in a deterministic universe where the laws of physics, whatever those are, we don't have laws in physics, and no one legislated that, no God there to legislate or, or Congress, where the laws of physics will determine cause and effect into the future, and therefore we don't have free will. Everything is preordained. This is an atheist talking here, okay? But we are unable to predict what the future would be. Yeah, so who cares? That's your problem, but the future is there, you're saying, already. So it doesn't matter if you have knowledge of the future, but you're saying that already exists, and you're just going to walk on footsteps that have already been uh, put in there, I guess, by God. I don't know who made the block universe, okay? We can't see the future. Yeah, you can't see the future. I mean, has the uh, big crunch already happened? I mean, if, if it's happened, why are we still here? And uh, what these people want you to think of is a timeline where the time is a tunnel, you know, time tunnel. And the big crunch, maybe, for example, is at the end of that process. And we're not there. We're still working our way towards the big crunch. So this is how they see this block universe, that... Uh, tilted glass of wine, I guess. <laughs> okay. Everything is preordained, but we are unable to predict what the future would be. We can't see the future unless we could step outside of space-time, right? You, you can step like God there. He's outside of space-time, right? He can see it all. We can't. That's impossible. Therefore, for practical purposes, that illusion is real. So, so again, uh, we don't care if if you know and if you have the illusion, it's it's irrelevant, totally irrelevant. And again, they digress. They go on this tangent 
to try to say, yeah, we can live with both. We can live with free will and determinism because even though everything's preordained, we don't know about it and that gives us the illusion of free will. And what does uh, another atheist, Mr. Dawkins, say to that? Well, he's more or less in the same boat. He says it, I guess, in different words, or he focuses on a different aspect, really, and here it is. He says, it's a separate question, which is, question, which is a sort of moral question, which is, if someone stands up in a court of law who's accused of murder and say, it wasn't me that did it, it was, it was my quantum fields, do you still punish them? You know, it goes to this issue of responsibility, which again plays no role whatsoever in the, the discussion. These people are digressing and f forcing you to go on a, on a tangent uh, in the discussion, and they never answer the question whether there is incompatibility between free will and determinism. It doesn't make any difference whether you think you're ultimately determined. If punishment has any rationale at all, might we say deterrence, then it's still there whether or not your actions are predetermined. Again, irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant to discussion at hand from, from physics. I mean, if they're going to introduce free will and determinism into physics, hey, let's deal with it from a physical point of view. Don't tell me what you believe or your recommendations, like he says later on. I don't really think we could run society if we simply said that nobody has any responsibility or blame for anything because their genes or their molecules or their quantum fields are responsible. Totally irrelevant. They never answer the question. They, they just sidestepped it by saying, we don't know the future and you have to be responsible for your actions, irrespective of whether the future has been predetermined for you or not. That's, that's the state of affairs today. We have these religious individuals who have taken over science. There, there is no, in fact, they haven't taken over. I want you to understand, we've always had religious folk running science. Today they call themselves scientists, before they used to call themselves priests, popes, bishops, whatever. Today they call themselves scientists. They're not scientists. They're religious individuals who are now in charge of science. They call themselves uh, atheists. They say, we don't believe in God. We, we look for proof, evidence through experiments. And then they give you this nonsense that, uh, yeah, there is free will, but... Uh, we also have a deterministic universe where the block universe already exists because it was made by, well, some say God and the other people say, no, it's made by itself. But whichever the case, uh, we have this block universe, the future exists, but you're st we still want you to be responsible for, for your actions, you know, because otherwise society would be a mess. Politics, recommendations, religion, that's all they talk about. That's, none of that has anything to do with science to begin with, to bring those subjects in. But if you're going to bring them in there, let's address them objectively. Don't tell me what you believe or what your recommendation is for how society should be or should behave. Okay, so my summary conclusions, Dawkins and Al-Khalili are not scientists. They are priests. Don't mistake them for scientists, for physicists, or biologists in the case of Dawkins. They were taught what that science is about evidence, proof, belief, persuasion, convincing, converting, and recruiting. That's what they think science is about, or physics in the case of al -Khalili. They propose that we have no free will because the block universe, the future is already out there. All we're doing is walking on footsteps. You're a cartoon character in a cartoon, in a little film. And you're, you're, you've already did the walking all the way to your death. You're already dead in the future somewhere. And all that history in front of you, because it's history, uh, for God it's behind, for you it's in front. But you're not aware of that history, what that history is. And so uh, what these people are saying, well, you should act as if it did not exist, because we do anyways. Right? And yeah, uh, under rational science, all we have is the present. There is no future. There is no past. All we have is the present. Okay, And that's a long story, but that's essentially it. So to talk about the future, to talk about the past is nonsense. Uh, but you nevertheless behave and should behave as if it weren't because of responsibility and punishment. And because we don't know the future anyways. So that's who these people are. They are priests who have continued to dominate science, the scientific world, 
and today they just mask it under atheism, they mask it under mathematical physics, uh, they say they call it science instead of religion, it's the same thing. We still have no explanations for common phenomena, especially invisible, intangible phenomena.